Welcome back to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to graph the reciprocal of some functions. Now, recall that the reciprocal is the multiplicative inverse of a number or expression. So what that means is that when we take the product of the original number and the reciprocal, it is going to always equal to 1. Now, the reciprocal then of a would be 1 over a, and the reciprocal of 1 over a is then going to be a. So let's use a number to show this. So let's say we have the number 7. The inverse is 1 over 7, and when I multiply these two numbers together, I get 7 over 7, and then that equals 1. All right, let's take a look at how to graph um, an original function and then see what it looks like when we take the reciprocal. So here we have f of x equal to x and the reciprocal of that, let's call it g of x, that would equal to 1 over x. All right, so let's create a table of values and we'll start with the original function, so x and y, and we'll take some negative numbers zero and some positive numbers and when we plug it in because we know that f of x equals x is a straight line we get the same y values as our x values so when we graph this we get a line that goes through zero zero all right so now let's graph the reciprocal. So we'll call this x and we'll put g of x for a y so that we know that it's the reciprocal. We're going to use the same x values and because we know that g of x is equal to 1 over x we can take the reciprocal of all of our x values. Now 1 over 0 we call is undefined because we can't divide by 0 and then we have one, and then we have a half. So graphing the reciprocal, we get something that looks like this. Now we only get four points here, but if we did pick some more points, so let's say we had um, half, then we know that the reciprocal of a half here would be, oops, would be two. And same thing with negative a half. The reciprocal of a negative a half, y value would be negative two. So we get a graph that looks something like so. Now the reason that I am drawing um, the graph not actually touching the y-axis is remember that this part here is undefined. So we actually have a line here on our y-axis which is called the asymptote. And the equation of this asymptote is x equal to zero. Now we also have a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis. So no matter what number I pick, as x gets bigger and bigger, if I'm looking at my blue line, when I divide it um, and take the reciprocal, I will never actually get to zero, but I'll be approaching zero. So here we have another asymptote here. This is our horizontal asymptote, and this line is y equals zero. Now, taking a look at the domain, we can see for the line, we have all real numbers. And for the range, we also have all real numbers. However, for the domain of the reciprocal, we have all real numbers except that x can't equal zero and then same thing with the range we have all real numbers for y except that y cannot equal zero so you can add the all real numbers part if you like as well all right let's take a look at another example um, of a line which doesn't actually go through um, the origin so here we have uh, 2x minus 4 and the reciprocal is 1 over 2x minus 4, and let's compare the two. 
So I'm going to create a table of values again. And plugging the x values into my f of x, I'm going to get negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, and 2. Now, of course, we can also graph it using the slope y intercept method of negative 4 and then a slope of 2. So we get a graph that looks like this. And then we're going to use our same x values. Now, because I know that g of x is a reciprocal of f of x, I can actually just take the y values from my first table, and we're going to take the reciprocal of those values. So it's going to be negative 1 eighth, negative 1 sixth, negative 1 fourth, negative 1 half, 1 over 0, which is undefined, and then 1 third. Okay, so I'm going to graph these points on the same graph. So I like to start with my asymptote because that kind of gives me a clear definition of where to kind of stop the graph. And at one, I get negative a half. And at three, I get a third. Now there aren't very many, it's not very helpful having only these two points here. So I'm gonna pick some other points. Now I know that if I um, took the reciprocal of this point here, where it has, sorry, which has a y value of one, it's still gonna be one. And same over here. The reciprocal of negative one will also be negative one. So having these two points, I can graph something that looks like this on the right side. And then on the left side, I can connect these two points to get a graph like this. Now, same as before, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, because as, again, as x gets larger and we take the reciprocal, we're never gonna actually reach a zero. Now this time we have an asymptote here of x equals to two. Okay, finding our domain and range. So we know that for the line, the domain and the range are all real numbers. And then this time, the domain for a reciprocal is that x cannot equal 2. We can see that there's a asymptote there, but it can be all the other numbers. And then for the range, again, y cannot equal 0. But again, it can also be all the other numbers. All right, let's summarize what we can see from these two examples here. So we see that when y equals f of x is changed to the reciprocal, g of x equals 1 over f of x, the x values, they stay the same. So we use the same x values, but you can see that the y values, they change to their reciprocal. Now, as f of x becomes very large, so we can see that as this for this line, as the y values became very large, we can see that the y values for the reciprocal became very, very small. And we see that it approaches zero. Now in contrast, as the y approaches zero, one over zero, that's gonna be a very large number. So that becomes very large. Now, like how I showed you in the last graph here, there were these two points where y equals one and y equals negative one over here and here when i take the reciprocal of those two points they didn't change so where y equals one and y equals negative one these are the invariant points now we had vertical asymptotes if y equals f of x and has all these x intercepts at x equals a b and c etc then the graph of the reciprocal will have vertical asymptotes at these x-intercepts. So x equals a, x equals b, x equals c, etc. All right, finally, the horizontal asymptotes. 
Now, to determine the horizontal asymptotes for any graph, we check for large values of x and large negative values of x. Now, when I say large, we probably want something greater than 100 or even 1,000. And then we want to see what y value we get close to but not equal to. Now, this is a concept that you'll learn more in calculus, but we can kind of take a look at it very briefly here. So if y approaches a, so y is getting closer to a, then y is equal to a is called a horizontal asymptote. So for example, let's say that we plug in the number 100 in for x. So to this example, so we get 2 times 100 divided by 100 plus 1. Then we would get 200 divided by 101, which is approximately equal to 2. So then we would say that y equals 2 would be a horizontal asymptote. Now, y will approach plus or so if y is approaching positive or negative infinity, then there actually is going to be no horizontal asymptote. Now, for our purpose, uh, when we have 1 over a large number, because the number is so large in the bottom, we're going to approach 0. And in contrast, if 1 is divided by 0, we're going to have infinity. Now, for the purpose of Math 12 here, we're going to usually see that the x-axis is going to be our horizontal asymptote for now. We're going to finish off by looking at a generic example. So here I have the sketch of f of x, and we're going to take the, um, and we're going to draw the reciprocal. So we're going to start with our intercepts, because I like to use them to act as a guide for my asymptote. So we have one here at negative 3, and we also have one here at x equals to 2. All right, next, I like to pick the points which are the invariant points, and that's where y equals 1. So we can see that's going to be here and here, and also where y equals negative 1, here, here, and all of these points over here. Now next, we are then going to take the reciprocal of some y values. So here we have positive 2, so we're going to have positive 1 half, and here we have positive 1 half, so we're going to have 2. So we're going to connect our points, and we get something that looks like this. And we could do the same thing with some other points too. So you have negative 6 and 1, 6, which is really small. But we'll grab something here, and it's going to go down. And over here we also have 2, and we take the reciprocal of negative half, so it'll be negative 2. And we get something that looks like this. Notice that these points are all the same because it's y equals the negative 1. All right, so let's identify the domain. So in the original graph, you can see that the domain was from negative 6 all the way to positive 6. For the range, we had also negative 6 because it starts here on the bottom, and it only goes up to 2. Now let's check our domain for the reciprocal. So we have negative 6, but it actually only goes up to... Oh, actually, you know what? What we can do is we can say that it goes from negative 6 all the way to 6. And then to make it easy, we know that x can't be negative 3. And we could also say that it can't be positive 2, where our asymptotes are. And then for the range, we can say that y is less than or equal to negative 1, 6, because that was our largest negative value. And then y is greater or equal to a half, because that is our smallest positive y value, which is right here at this point, right there. And that's how we graph the um, reciprocal of a generic function. Now we can also add the asymptotes that we have here with x equals negative 3, x equals 2, and then finally also y equals 0.